Okay, so I have that it's 11 o'clock, so we will be there. And yeah. uh, welcome. So I'm excited that we're going to have this conversation, and we have a lot of people signed up for this uh, webinar, so there's a lot of other people who are interested in what you have to say too. And um, so um, I just want to um, welcome you all to this uh, webinar this morning with L Laura Harrington, who is the new director um, of a center she's going to be talking about this morning, and the Northeast Regional Center for Excellence in Vector-Borne Diseases. And uh, she's going to be answering your questions and telling you about the new center and what's planned in the near and long-term future. And um, so I'm just going to um, cover some uh, housekeeping issues. Um, there's going to be a recording of this, so if you need to duck out, if you have a class or something to go to, uh, there will be a recording and it's going to be up on this link. Um, it'll take us a few days to put it up there and uh, we will send out an email to everyone who's um, registered to let you know when it's available. And um, we'll also post it on our website. And um, we love questions. This is actually a really interactive uh, process. And uh, you can put your questions in any time. There is a bar. Um, I think it's at the, probably at the bottom of your screen. If you put your mouse over the screen, uh, a tool uh, bar should come up. And there is a Q&A. That's a, like a little square box that says Q&A underneath it. If you click on that, you can type in your question and we'll be stopping every few minutes during uh, this conversation to um, ask Laura your questions. There are quite a lot of people who are registered for this, so we're not going to um, have people ask questions um, through the audio, um, but through that feature and it allows us to keep track of things and monitor. And, um, and there is also a feature on there where you can uh, ask your question anonymously. Um, and um, so if you don't want to put your name with your question, that is totally fine. And um, you're more than welcome to do that. So we are going to uh, jump in. And uh, first of all, I just want to say uh, welcome, Laura. Thank you for taking this time to do this because I know you must be super busy with trying to get the, the center up and running. So thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, great. So I want to introduce Laura to you all. Uh, Professor Harrington became interested in global health issues and vector-borne diseases after living and working for several years in rural Thailand. She contracted both dengue and malaria while living abroad and realized the impact of these infections on children and adults in resource-poor nations. Her research focuses on the biology, ecology and behavior of mosquitoes that transmit human diseases. Current research projects in her lab address the blood feeding and mating behavior of mosquito vectors of dengue fever, Zika, um, chikungunya, and I'll let you pronounce that correctly, <laughs> uh, West Nile virus and malaria. And um, so uh, thank you for joining us. And the very first question is, can you uh, tell us please about the center and what it is? And I'll also just ask Laura, when you want me to flick the slides, just, uh, just let me know and I'll move it on to the next one. Okay, sure. So you can go ahead and move on to the next slide, I believe. So, um, so good morning and welcome. I'm really excited to have a chance to uh, tell you more about the center. Uh, this. Um, new Center is part of a program uh, funded by the CDC or Centers for Disease Control and um, in December of this year they awarded uh, four regional centers uh, for excellence in vector-borne diseases around the country and in the last month they've added an additional uh, center. Um, and I, So I'll tell you a little bit more about who we are today and uh, what we're doing and what we're planning for the future. Um, so here you can see our leadership team. So the center hub is here at Cornell University in the Department of Entomology, which is part of the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Uh, but we have um, very strong um, co-principal investigators on this uh, program at the Connecticut Ag Experiment Station, that's Ted Andriotis, at the New York State Department of Health, that's Ryan Backinson, at the Wadsworth Center in Albany, and that's Laura Kramer, and at Columbia University, and that's Maria Duke Vosser. Um, so these are the, um, the members of the leadership team for the center. You can go on to the next slide. Okay. 
And then we have a group of regional partners, and this is growing. Uh, part of our goal is to, uh, to be inclusive and to include uh, the entire region, the Northeast region, uh, in this uh, program. So we have regional partners um, in Connecticut, in New York State, in New Jersey, in Maine, in Pennsylvania, um, in Vermont and uh, Rhode Island, and we're um, hoping to expand this. This is a growing list. I believe we have about 43 uh, different regional partners at this point. And these groups are involved in um, both our education, training, and research programs through the center. We can move on to the next one. Um, did you want to pause for questions at this point or continue? Well, I'll, I'll just jump in when we're ready to do that. And, okay. Um, yeah, so these are the three main goals of the center. Um, and the first goal is to train a cadre of public health entomologists. So these are individuals um, who have the knowledge and skills to respond rapidly to direct threats from vector-borne diseases in the United States. And um, you know, we know with the, the recent Zika um, crisis last year um, that it was difficult to find people who were trained with the knowledge uh, and understanding to respond very quickly. And so um, that's just one example of an emerging disease threat. There will undoubtedly be more. And so that's one of our, our major goals. Um, and the second goal is to build effective communities of practice. So we've recognized that uh, people across the spectrum working on vector-borne diseases in our region don't always talk to each other. Um, you know, there is expert, expertise scattered with, throughout the region. Uh, we have people working at the health department level. We have people working in academia, um, in other uh, government and local agencies. And so we're trying to bring everyone together um, and talk to each other and really collaborate to synergize our efforts for surveillance and response to disease outbreaks. And then the third goal of the center is to conduct applied research. So this is not basic science with uh, the ultimate goal 10 to 15 years down the road of being applied in a practical sense. This is research that we can conduct today and we can use to control vector-borne infections um, over the next season. So this is really close to implementation work um, to develop uh, prevention and control tools and methods um, to, do, to directly respond to vector-borne disease outbreaks. Cool, great, that sounds exciting. And um, yeah, and actually I have a question uh, before we open it up to other questions. Uh, you mentioned that there are other centers that have been funded throughout the US and another one has just come online. Do they all have similar goals and, and similar, because I know that often on these webinars we have a lot of people from the Northeast, but we also get people from other parts of the of the country and right right yeah yeah they they do have similar goals um, the approaches to addressing these goals vary by region um, because there's a lot of variation in regional um, you know issues related to vector borne diseases um, but we do have similar goals and we're actually working across these centers uh, in some of these areas where we, we um, are trying to develop tools and education um, that can be broadly used across the country. Um, so there is a, a Southeast Atlantic um, Center. There's one in the, um, the Northern uh, Midwest. Uh, there's a Southwestern Center and then there's a Pacific um, Center which includes California and the Western states. Okay, great. And where would people be able to find a list of all the centers? <clears throat> Is that available through your website or through the No, that's a really good question. Um, I can um, share that. I'll look into that and, and uh, share a link with you. I, I'm not sure if the CDC has it directly on their website or you might need to search around. So I'll share that with you so you can share it with the group. Great. All right. Wonderful. And uh, Nancy uh, Kisimano is uh, keeping an eye on the questions that come in. And Nancy, do we have any questions? Yes, we do. Uh, one of them is similar to the question Yana just asked. How does the center in the Northeast compare to the other centers across the country? There might be folks tuning in from other regions that know about the center in their region, but not the others. 
Yeah, so um, there are a couple of ways that the center in the Northeast differs from the other centers uh, in the country. Um, we have some very specific vector-borne disease problems here, uh, which we don't necessarily find in other regions. For example, we're on the margin of range expansion of the Asian tiger mosquito, which is a very important mosquito. It's an invasive species, um, and it's right about at its limit in the Northeast. And one of the things that we're addressing through our research program is what allows this mosquito to expand its range and, and are there some strategies we can use based on its biology at this limit to control it. Another way that we're different is that we have some tick-borne infections which are very important that you don't necessarily find in other states or you don't find them at the same level uh, that we have here uh, in the Northeast. Um, currently, we have a crisis with a deer tick virus, a Powassan type virus, which is transmitted by ticks here. Um, and uh, we're very concerned about it and trying to understand the ecology um, of that disease transmission cycle here in the Northeast. So there's a lot of variation in geographic range, in ec ecology and habitat of these vectors. And it's it's nice for us to be able to focus just on our particular region and trying to develop solutions. Uh, and the other regional centers are, are doing similar things. They have other issues that they're dealing with that are different and unique. Uh, so next question is, who are the public health entomologists? Are they academic entomologists in other disciplines that you want to train in public health issues, or are they public health professionals or pesticide management specialists that you want to train to have a better understanding or of entomology or all of the above? Yeah, well, that's a great question. So it's really all of the above. And so we're in the process right now of developing our training program. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later in the webinar. Um, but I can tell you that we have a, a master's program um, for, um, it's a master's in vector-borne disease biology. And so that's more of an academic program. Uh, we're just developing it here at Cornell. We're hoping that we can develop some online modules so that anybody anywhere could access these. Um, and that's, a, that's more of an academic program with an eye to really uh, training the next generation the workforce to go out and be placed um, in uh, public health programs uh, with the DEC, with different types of, of agencies. The other types of training that we have are, are uh, related to people who may already be practitioners, may already be uh, in the workforce working on vector-borne disease issues, and we're trying to help fill the gaps um, with training that may not necessarily be provided yet. Okay. And I'm going to jump in and uh, suggest that we actually uh, move through and talk about the research and then uh, take a break for some more questions and then talk about the training because I can see there are lots of questions coming in and, um, and actually some of those may well be answered by, um, by some of the slides that you've put together. So we just okay. have a um, a few slides with some information. So uh, we'll move along and, and then we'll come back to, uh, to more questions. So. Okay, so this, um, this slide just highlights the structure of our network and the three arms um, linked directly to our goals. So uh, really trying to enhance public health practice um, and um, you know, trying to aid those who are on the ground uh, really doing vector surveillance and community prevention. Um, also, the enhanced training, which we just touched on, not just academic training, but also continuing professional education. And then our applied resource, uh, our research uh, goals, which include vector biology and behavior and, and evidence-based control. Uh, for both, we're really focusing on mosquitoes and, and tick ticks and, and the diseases that they transmit uh, for this program. Ultimately, um, this, uh, we're hoping, will help improve our ability to respond to outbreaks and ultimately the, the quality of life for citizens in our community. So is the research being done by the core group of, uh, in, the, in the center, or are you going to um, be doing um, a model that we have here at the IPM Center of uh, providing small grants for other researchers in the region? 
Yeah, you know, we there's a possibility that we'll be providing small grants in the future um, for the initial um, startup years of the program. We're going to be focusing on the um, existing um, collaborations and new collaborations that could come along uh, for addressing these questions. Great. And um, is there anything more that you'd like to share about um, the research before we move on to the training aspect? Yeah, and I, I do have some research um, details that I'll cover here in a little bit more after the training. So I can talk about the different clusters that we have within the program as well. All right. Awesome. So move on. Yeah. So, yeah. So here we go with the um, research cluster. So these are six of the uh, key um, focus areas that we'll be working on. Um, the first one is predicting current and future infection risks in the Northeast region. Um, so this includes some um, modeling exercises uh, that are really focused on near-term prediction of um, transmission risk to people with the vector born, with both uh, mosquito-borne and tick-borne infections. Um, the second one is investigating new traffic methods. Uh, a lot of people may not realize that the conventional uh, ways of trapping mosquitoes, for example, using CDC light traps, only capture a fraction of the existing mosquitoes in the population. And it's important, especially as we get new invaders in the region that aren't readily trapped with CDC light traps to investigate other methods. And so we're working on that. Um, we also have um, um, a research program looking at novel vector pathogen interactions. So if we know that the, for example, mosquitoes in our region can readily transmit new viruses that could be introduced ahead of time, uh, we can be armed with that knowledge to try to minimize the introduction of these uh, novel uh, pathogens, but also to be able to respond quickly um, in the event of a crisis if they're introduced. The fourth research cluster is on the overwintering biology of vectors. Um, and climate effects, how that influences their biology, their ability to survive through the winter. Um, and so for, here, for this, we're focusing on that Asian tiger mosquito that I just mentioned, uh, that's just about at the margin of its range in the Northeast. Uh, and we're also focusing on um, some of the tick uh, vectors like the lone star tick and deer tick and their ability to overwinter and how climate influences that. We're also looking at predicted changes in climate over time and how that will likely influence these vector populations. The fifth research area is controlling and managing vectors. So using really practical strategies that include some existing um, management practices for other insects that we can adapt for controlling and managing our vector-borne um, uh, um, our vectors in the region. And then the sixth one is on basic field biology of mosquito vectors. So for example, uh, we don't really understand um, if some of these important mosquito vectors uh, feed readily on sugar um, in their environment. Can we use toxic sugar baits, for example, to attract and kill them? Um, we don't understand much about um, how often they're feeding on people and other animals that may serve as reservoirs for infections. And so it's important to try to, um, to learn more about that and try to understand uh, those aspects of their ecology as well as their habitat, their immature stages and where they survive. Okay, oh, interesting. So, yeah and, uh, yeah, and I've actually just noticed this myself um, uh, in my house that I've lived in for 10 years. I've never had mosquitoes and uh, I've had bats also in my attic that have now gone because I think of the disease that's wiping them out. And I've noticed this year we have a lot more mosquitoes and because we've had this wet summer. Yes. And the bats are not here to eat them up. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. For the first time I find myself flicking mosquitoes. And yep. <laughs> yeah. Everything. And, and, you know, that's, I'm, I'm happy that you said that because that's another thing that we're trying to do with the center. And as you know, one of the first steps in good um, integrated pest management is being able to identify the pest. 
And um, a lot of people don't understand what, uh, for example, the immature stages of a mosquito look like. Um, and, and so if they don't know what they look like, they don't know um, where to look in their yard. Um, they don't know if they look in a container, if they have container breeding mosquitoes. So that type of um, community education is, is also a focus of the center. Wonderful. I can see we have lots of questions. So um, let's see if um, um, do we have some questions around the research? Okay. Okay. There she goes. I'm unmuted. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, around the research. The goals seem to recognize that there is need for more people involved in public health related to entomology. Is there any focus on increased job creation in this area? That's not really about the research. When you want to tackle that one? Sure, yeah, I mean, I think that's a really good question. I can tell you that one of the things that we've done to start is to do what's called a needs assessment. And this is a tool um, that is very useful in public health to understand, you know, if there are training or knowledge gaps or needs. Um, and so we've administered a needs assessment uh, survey and it's given us very interesting information. Um, we surveyed people who don't necessarily have a primary focus in vector biology as well as those that do. And um, the next step, that has been very success, successful and, I, and we think the next step is to reach out to employers and people who direct these programs and find out what are the skills that you're looking for for hiring. So this is directly related to your question about um, will there be an increase in hiring. Um, what we're hearing so far, and one of the reasons we made this a focus of our center was that, yes, there are these jobs available, but we don't have the people um, who are trained to fill them. And um, so we'll continue to, to um, to be reaching out we, so we understand that there are opportunities, there could be more opportunities if there were more people who were trained uh, in these areas to address these, these um, challenges. I don't have a good sense of how many new jobs would be opening up and where the funding would come from, um, but it's definitely a need and we're hoping that others will, will recognize, you know, who are in charge of allocating the budget um, will recognize this, that there's a tremendous need for, for hiring in this area. So here's a research one. The research clusters two through six could fit into an IPM approach. Is this something you are thinking about and would involve individuals and groups working in this area make sense? Absolutely. We always think of an IPM approach. Um, and so um, we definitely will, as we move forward, um, we'll be taking the knowledge that we learn um, from these different clusters and helping to develop control programs which take an IPM approach. We're very fortunate to have uh, partners through the New York State IPM program uh, as well, working directly as members of the center and um, we'll definitely be working with them um, on developing some of these approaches. One more? Sure. Sure. Um, this is going back to the slide before how much of the focus of goal three control tools will focus on the vectors themselves versus specific pathogens, for example, killing mosquitoes or ticks controlling white-footed mice versus vaccinating for Borrelia? Yeah, so, um, you know, so that's a good question. Um, you know, the, the, our focus is primarily on the vectors themselves for the center and uh, trying to understand ways to control the vectors. Um, we're not as focused on, for example, developing new therapeutics for these uh, infections in people. Um, and, um, you know, I think that's good because there's a tremendous need for more information and more strategies on controlling the vectors themselves. And that's part of an approach which, which includes controlling the vectors that transmit the disease, but also um, the development of new treatments um, for people who are infected with them. Oh, 
Okay, great. Well, thank you. And uh, we'll move along and talk about the teaching and training aspect of what you're planning on doing. Okay. Uh, and we'll take questions and then we'll have lots of time um, to, to answer all of your questions um, any, on anything related to this topic and that's a great okay. use of uh, Laura's expertise and time. So, um, so let's uh, tell me about the teaching and training that you've got planned and how you have that structured. Yeah, so we're very excited to, um, to be um, inviting potential students inviting applicants to apply for a graduate master's of science program. Um, we'll be accepting our first class next year. Um, so the application deadline is December 1st this year for um, acceptance for next year. And um, this program um, is similar to a master's in public health program, but it's a master in science offered through the entomology track here at Cornell. And uh, it includes courses in uh, basic entomology. It includes courses in medical entomology, um, in veterinary uh, entomology, and the overall ecology of disease transmission. Um, it also includes some um, training in uh, leadership and communicating to the public and the media. Um, and um, so, um, you know, we're very excited about this program. It built into it is a 10 week experiential, uh, uh, I guess it's like an internship, we call it an experiential learning um, project where they're placed with. Uh, individuals working on pest management or working on um, surveillance in public health departments uh, where they get really practical experience. Um, and so we'll be accepting a small class for this this year and we have funding which fully supports their tuition, their stipend, their fees, uh, even their summer internship. Um, and so we're, we're hoping that we'll be able to um, um, offer this program for the next couple of years and then we'll take it from there and see if we can continue um, training these people um, here at Cornell and developing some online um, workshops. Uh, we also have a vector biology boot camp. Um, this will be an intensive three-day uh, course um, where people can come and learn um, um, about um, vector identification, they can learn about um, ways to sample vectors, the types of diseases they transmit, um, and uh, how to coordinate programs, how to analyze the data. Um, so we're excited to be offering this uh, this coming spring. And then we're developing a, a series of webinars on different topics so people uh, if they want some addi additional education or training can sign up for these webinars which will touch on uh, different uh, current topics in uh, vector-borne disease control um, vector-borne disease biology in the Northeast. Wonderful that sounds exciting so I actually have a couple of questions before sure. we ask Nancy. So um, the internships with people working with entomologists and and uh, folks through the Masters of Science program um, is that going to be region-wide or are those going to be local to the Cornell community or the Ithaca community? And, um, yeah no that's going to be region-wide so we're in the process of gathering um, information on opportunities across the region. Um, and we're, we'll actually be encouraging them to go outside of Cornell um, and, um, and work in um, places where they can get really practical on the job training uh, for these programs. So I'm just thinking there are probably people that are listening or will listen to this who um, might be excited about uh, hosting. Yes, please don't hesitate to contact me um, if you're uh, interested in this, interested in having a student uh, join you for the summer and help out with your programs. Okay, great. And, um, and then the boot camp, you mentioned that that's going to be uh, in the spring is, and um, actually I just had a question come through on the chat feature. Um, asking about identification. So it sounds like uh, that person would be interested in this for sure. And um, is that going to um, be here at Cornell? Is it going to be offered online? And is there going to be a fee for it? Or is that all yet to be determined? Yeah, so it definitely will be an in-person experience. It won't be an online program. Um, and 
we're just now planning where we'll have the boot camp. We want it to be someplace uh, centrally located so it's easy for people to get to. Uh, so we're actually looking at either downstate in New York or in Connecticut um, to, to um, hold that boot camp and more information will be uh, forthcoming on that once we you know get the the location together in the program we'll be sharing that uh, at the end of this uh, webinar today uh, we have the link to our website and uh, all the information on that and the other programs will be available on our website okay great terrific and um, and so Nancy uh, do we have some other questions related to the teaching and training opportunities that are coming up Yes, does the graduate master's program uh, mirror programs at other institutions? What are the similarities or differences? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I think the, um, the similarities with the graduate master's program um, are, you know, other institutions where they have an entomology focus, it's not, that's not possible, uh, that's not present everywhere, but there are other departments of entomology that have really good um, high quality training in basic entomology. And so that could be a similarity. I think what's really unique about this program is that we have uh, the expertise from this regional center. Um, so other academics and especially other practitioners who are um, actually working directly on uh, public health surveillance and control who are going to be contributing to this program. So we expect we have some core competencies that all students will be expected to meet and they should come out of this program with a really good quality education understanding of vector biology um, and um, the types of um, challenges um, that um, you know, we face uh, in controlling them and an understanding of future risk and how to adapt to future changes um, and challenges in controlling uh, vector-borne diseases in the region. So uh, we, they're also, they'll have leadership training, they'll have the ability to take uh, special uh, seminars where they'll get really in-depth um, training and um, knowledge about specific infections um, that are relevant to the region. So uh, that's unique. We, I don't see that being offered other places. Um, and so we hope that we'll be able to fill a gap in that sense. A couple of other logistical questions about the master's program. Uh, will it include pesticide applicator credits? And did you, uh, is there tuition support for the master's program or just the summer internship? Yeah, so we currently are not including pesticide applicator credits, but we certainly would provide all the information for the um, students to go ahead and get their, um, their um, um, go ahead and take courses in order to get credits or to get training in that area. Um, and what was the second question you asked me? Second part. Uh, the will there be tuition assistance? Yeah, so we've actually covered in, in this grant, uh, we have um, built in um, funding for these students. So we have funding for, uh, it's not a lot, about 12 students um, and everything is paid for. So it's a two year program, their tuition, their fees, um, everything that you know, you'd normally have to pay for is already covered, including the housing uh, and the stipend for that summer um, experience. Great. Uh, what plans, if any, are there to reach out to other health departments within the region to participate in center activities? Well, there's a lot. Um, it's not just a plan. We're actively um, doing that and we'll continue to do that. We're trying to engage as many of the different um, health uh, programs uh, in the region as we possibly can um, in, in uh, you know, getting their feedback on um, what's important as far as training and also getting their um, collaboration, their expertise in developing these programs. Should I keep going? Uh, yep, if you have one more and then we'll, uh, we'll uh, finish up the slides and then we'll, uh, we can have lots of other questions. Is there any prospect for studying risk communication to the general public and effective messaging and message delivery to this group? 
since individual behaviors such as wearing protective clothing and using repellents are very important in preventing disease? Yes, that's a really good question, a really important one, and we actually have a specific course for them. It's a seminar course in risk communication. It includes communicating to the public, public health messaging, as well as uh, working and communicating with the media. Great. Okay, well, let's move on with uh, what we have for Pat, and then we'll come back and, and uh, answer some more questions. Okay. So, um, yes, so um, what would you like to say about the key takeaways that you'd love people to know about the center? Yeah, so I just, this is um, a really exciting opportunity for me because we're just getting this, the center started, and um, we want to get the message out. Um, we definitely want to... Um, make sure that we're filling a void in um, training, in education, and in research uh, for the region. So please don't hesitate to contact us um, with additional questions if you have more questions after today or uh, request some if you want to learn more about being part of the center. Um, we just have a brand new website um, that we just released last week and the URL is here. There's a lot of information here. Um, please check back. We'll be adding more information uh, for the public and for practitioners um, as we move on through the coming year. Mm -hmm. Great. So it looks like it's uh, ne northeast regional vector and um, so I definitely encourage folks to go and check out the new site and I guess let you know that if, if they find any broken links anywhere. So <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah, but wonderful. Um, okay, so um, so we have uh, the rest of the time for us to for to ask Laura questions um, about the center or um, about vector-borne diseases. Your questions about um, um, mosquitoes and, uh, and ticks and what they're planning on doing. So I will um, unmute Nancy and um, whatever the questions we have um, come in. Uh, so we have a, a disease question. Are there any EEV uh, infection cycle monitoring methods, prediction, or other EEV studies planned or under investigation through the center? Yeah, so you're talking about Eastern equine encephalitis virus, um, and there definitely are, um, there's a research um, effort underway to um, monitor these populations, monitor uh, focus, foci, our hotspots for transmission. And we're aware of a couple in the Northeast right now uh, that are being monitored. Um, and um, there's definitely an effort uh, by um, especially the group at the Connecticut Ag Experiment Station to understand uh, more about um, the relationship, especially with the primary enzootic vector mosquito, which is Culicida malinura and triple E virus. Um, so that's definitely, it's a very important uh, viral infection, rare, but important in our region. And there's definitely um, a lot of interest and um, focus on understanding more about triple E so that we can control it. Will the Northeast Regional Center of Excellence offer tick ID and testing as part of the surveillance activities of local public health departments? Yeah, so um, we are um, not conducting any testing directly through the Center for Ticks. The um, School of Veterinary Medicine uh, collaborators, especially the Animal Health Diagnostic Lab here at Cornell, are partners with us and they have just started a new tick testing program. Um, and I can share a link to, to their website. Um, tick testing can be um, difficult. Um, it's not recommended by the CDC um, and it's not something that we um, promote widely because um, you have to have a lab that's very well qualified to do the testing. Um, and then you need to be able to interpret the results. Um, if you're tick test positive, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're infected uh, with a pathogen. And so um, it, it can be a tricky process, um, but there is that resource here through the Animal Health Diagnostic Lab, and I can share that link um, uh, with the group. Um, 
tick identification, we'll definitely be doing tick identification. Um, we noticed from our needs assessment that there's a lot of variation in um, training um, and access to training for tick identification. And so we'll be trying to figure out how to reach those individuals who want more training um, in this area. But definitely that's going to be a primary um, activity for us with our um, Train the Practitioner program. And I can also chime in here that we have a uh, funded project with uh, Tom Mava and the Tick and Encounter Resource Project, uh, uh, Center. And um, if anyone is interested um, in testing and identification and more about tech, that's a good uh, resource for people. Yeah. Well. And so Tom is a member of our center um, as well. And um, I believe we have a link or we're, we're about to place a link to his uh, program um, and um, on our website, so we'll also have that information um, if people want to want to submit pictures of ticks to him um, for identification. Okay, great. Okay, uh, is there a leadership team at the national level for all centers? Yes, there is a leadership team at the national level, um, and that includes all of the program directors um, for the different centers um, and the uh, co-PIs. Um, and we actually do talk to each other um, quite a bit. We actually have uh, planned um, sub-meetings or satellite meetings at the various uh, professional society meetings that we go to, including the American Society for Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, the American Mosquito Control Association meeting, um, and, and others. So we are working together and we are um, doing some cross collaboration um, to try to enhance our programs. Um, and then that also includes the officials from the CDC. Um, each of us has an advisor uh, at the CDC who works with us closely as well. I'm sort of jumping around here. Will the social aspects, such as those related to knowledge gained, behavior changed, and improved conditions be part of the research cluster? Um, yes, I mean, it's not an initial um, focus for our research, but we definitely will be, um, that is an important component um, that we will be paying attention to. Um, and we'll probably be adding some collaborators with expertise um, with that aspect um, of uh, vector-borne disease as we move forward in the future. Okay. Uh, what is the mis mix of basic and applied research? And for the latter, who do you envision will be those, ex who do you envision will be those extending the new information to the public? Okay, so the first part of that question was the mixture of basic and applied research. Uh, our, our goal is to primarily do applied research for the center. So I would say right now about 80% of our research effort is applied. Um, as far as who would communicate that information um, to the public, uh, we definitely are partnering with um, the Cooperative Extension program here in New York State with the IPM programs um, to get information out. Um, and the other states will also be doing that through, through their region. Are you collaborating or communicating with the ESA in any way? I know they also received, recently received a grant from the CDC to better train pest management professionals in vector management. Yeah, we are. Uh, we're not directly collaborating, but we're in communication um, with the ESA um, to understand um, what their goals are for the for that program that they receive funding for, um, and also to the AMCA, the American Mosquito Control Association, which received about ten million from the CDC to develop um, programs for mosquito control education. Um, and what we really want to do is we want to make sure that we're not duplicating efforts uh, and that we're actually meeting um, a void uh, in the education that's being offered. And so we're, we're actively uh, communicating with them um, and, and learning more about what their, um, their goals will be. 
Okay, great. Um, um, do we have any other questions, Nancy? Uh, we do. Should I keep going? Uh, sure. As I uh, say, we have Laura's time and we have questions. Yep. So yes. <laughs> How will the center be sustained beyond the current funding? Well, that's a great question. Uh, we don't know how the center will be sustained. Uh, what we're hoping is through this initial five years of funding, we will develop an infrastructure uh, and the synergy um, to take the center forward. And so I'm, uh, as the center director, I'm actively um, fundraising for it. Uh, we'll be applying for um, federal uh, funding um, to continue um, some of our efforts with the center. But it's a good question. We, right now, we don't know. We're uncertain about the, the future of the center. And do you have five years of funding, is that correct? Yes, we do. We have five years, a significant chunk there to take in care of. So. And then there's another question that has come in, which is, since vectors are global, how big will the international component be at the center? Yeah, so, you know, I think we have an international component just because of the nature of what we do. Um, many of us who are involved in the center have international collaborations and it's sometimes hard to separate. Um, definitely the, the mosquito problems don't end at the borders um, of the country. Um, but this is a uh, US funded program and um, our uh, charge is to address problems in the Northeast. So that is our main focus, but certainly we are thinking about um, connections with um, international collaborators and similarities um, you know for some of the strategies that we'll be developing they could be applied in other parts of the country or of the world um, where we have problems with with these vectors all right great thank you and uh, another question has come in are you collaborating or coordinating with the epa in any way you know, we've reached out to, um, to members of the EPA um, and we're not formally collaborating, but we're, we're very interested in uh, working with them and trying to understand, um, especially with, um, with our education program, um, you know, where we can fill some gaps or provide additional information or help um, with education surrounding, um, surrounding pesticides and um, um, you know, pesticide application and control strategies, monitoring. Um, certainly we're looking at existing chemistries that may be used, are currently used for other insects that could be used for vector control um, and trying to understand, um, you know, how we can, um, the registration process, for example, um, for, um, you know, you know, gaining approval to use those chemistries for um, other vectors in the, in the region. So uh, we're not, we've definitely reached out to the EPA, but we are not formally collaborating with them. Okay, very great. And, um, and then the last question we have is, uh, how will the center know um, what, that you've achieved your impacts and how are you measuring your impacts? Yeah, so we have very specific um, uh, um, milestones. Um, that we're trying to meet that we've already thought about and articulated. Uh, we do uh, quarterly reporting uh, back to the CDC on our progress um, and we monitor our ability to reach these milestones and ultimately we're hoping to make a change. We're hoping to um, make a difference um, in improving education improving outreach, um, improving our ability to monitor and to control vector-borne diseases. So all of our um, milestones and our, our outcomes are linked to, um, to that overall goal for the center. Oh, wonderful. That sounds really exciting to, uh, to be at the beginning of something new and build, build a new project. So yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, actually, we have one more question, and we have time to take it. So, um, with, um, and this is, uh, I'll read it out. With the recent and un unfortunate hurricane activity in the US, does the center have any plans in assisting those communities who are now concerned about increased mosquito activity due to the flooding? 
Yeah, we definitely, it's a really good question. Um, there definitely are going to be issues that will arise um, because of the um, recent uh, disasters, the, the situation in, in Texas and along the Gulf Coast and now in Florida. Um, we are not directly um, involved um, in addressing those problems as the Northeast Regional Center, but we are working um, and will pro provide assistance to our partners um, in those regions. So there is a, a southeastern center and a Gulf Coast um, regional center, and, and we are communicating with um, our partners at those centers and we'll uh, provide any assistance knowledge um, that we can to them. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, and um, so our slides are, there we go, our slides are a little sluggish right now, been sitting for a while. Um, so, um, Thank you for answering those questions. And we probably have time for one or two more if we get some in, but I wanted to cover another um, interesting, exciting aspect that we have here at the IPM Center. We have just re uh, launched a Find a Colleague uh, page on our website. So to facilitate um, uh, interaction and collaboration in the region, um, we ask anyone that's involved in IPM that you can post a profile, um, and there's a link to where you can post your profile there. And, um, and then there's a uh, second web page uh, where there are all these profiles and there's somebody's, uh, they'll see someone's picture and their research interests, the kind of things they're looking to collaborate on. And um, so we just think this will be a really useful tool. And um, also for those folks who may have missed it, um, our recent uh, partnership grant uh, RFA was just released last week. And uh, that's also available on our website. So um, those are two resources for, for folks in the region. And, um, and there's going to be an archive of today's webinar um, that will be up in a few days and you can watch it as often as you like and send it to your friends and colleagues. And um, I certainly think this uh, webinar has been of a lot of interest and, and hopefully used to people. And oops, I think I just, <laughs> there we go. I think I just did the end there. So uh, Laura, thank you very, very much for taking the time to do this because I know you must have been super busy uh, over the last few months and that will, I'm sure, continue for the next five years. And um, is there anything that you'd like to, to leave the audience with um, before we complete? Well, thank you so much for having having me, and um, I really appreciate all the great questions. Please don't hesitate to check out our website for more information, and uh, you also are welcome to contact me directly if you have additional questions. Thanks so much. Okay, lovely. Well, thank you very much for, for your time, and uh, thank you for all the people who attended. We've had actually a good, a good uh, number of people attend today. So. Uh, thanks, I will call it complete.